We want to welcome you again to the Wednesday night uh, uh, Bible classes for the Stonecrest uh, Church of Christ. We affectionately call this time of the week uh, Wednesdays in the Word, where we simply gather around uh, the Word of God, open it up, read a section of it, uh, explain it uh, in its context, and then apply it. Uh, it's meeting uh, to our everyday uh, lives. Thank you so much for uh, joining us again uh, for this study on Wednesday night. We've been looking uh, at that pericope, that uh, that paragraph uh, in Genesis chapter three under the heading of snake in paradise. Uh, we want to continue uh, 
that tonight, but we want to go one step further uh, and show you something about the strategy uh, of Satan. Uh, and of course, his chief strategy uh, is to be uh, deceptive. It is to tell you lies. Well, uh, uh, we'll expand upon, on that in, in just a moment. But before we do, we want to invite all of the ladies in our audience uh, to a special monthly meeting uh, of the ladies of the Stonegrass Church of Christ. Uh, we call it our light uh, ministry. Uh, once a month, these ladies gather together. Uh, League Dog is probably going to put a uh, a flyer uh, on the screen uh, for you, giving you all of the necessary uh, information about which you can join them this Saturday morning, uh, beginning at 11 a.m. It is a Zoom uh, meeting. Uh, all of the uh, Zoom information uh, is there. Uh, and... Uh, uh, on behalf of the ladies of our congregation, we certainly uh, invite you to be a part of their monthly uh, light uh, meaning. Uh, particularly and specifically this Saturday morning, one of the ladies of our congregation who's given leadership to uh, the National uh, Ladies Retreat. It has been hosted by uh, the Stonecrest uh, Church of Christ. Uh, our congregation is the uh, principal host. We are expecting over 2,000 ladies to convene right here in our city in April uh, of uh, uh, 2023. That fly you to uh, should be made available uh, to you on the screen. Uh, if you need additional uh, information, then follow the uh, information on the screen. This Saturday, uh, Carol Hunter, uh, who's leading that project for us, will be speaking uh, to our ladies, updating them on logistics and plans uh, for the uh, conference. You perhaps want to join them uh, this Saturday morning, beginning uh, at uh, 11 a.m. Now, let's, let's get to the matter again uh, at hand here. Now, I have on the screen for you uh, a graphic uh, and or an image of a uh, of what uh, is called in uh, military arenas uh, a point man. I want you to listen to me carefully because I know uh, I'm speaking to a number of men and women uh, who have served our nation uh, valiantly and you have the wounds to prove it. Uh, faithfully uh, as a good soldier uh, of the United States military. Now, for those men and women, and, and let me first of all thank you for your service. We appreciate it uh, on behalf of a grateful nation. But I want you to think with me now. If you just uh, go back to your uh, military days, uh, let's say you were over in Vietnam, uh, over in Afghanistan, uh, and you were sent out on a reconnaissance mission. And you were given a map of where all of the landmines were. Uh, you were given a map of uh, uh, where the bombs uh, lay, where the traps are, where the enemy plans to attack. Uh, if you were given uh, a map of that kind of information as you go out on your reconnaissance mission, let me ask you a question. Uh, since the territory uh, is unfamiliar to you, uh, since the uh, geography is unfamiliar to you, but, but danger lay ahead. But the danger has been disguised. M may I ask you a question as a former or even an active person of the military? If you received that kind of map and you were out on reconnaissance, 
How often would you consult that map? How often would you look at that information that's given, uh, giving you information for your own survival? Well, okay, uh, lest I miss too many of you in the audience. Uh, you, you've never served in the military. So, okay, brother B, that, 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 that doesn't apply to me. All right. Let's just take it out of the, uh, the arena of military warfare. What if, uh, you were given a book that, that told you where all of the landmines were, all of the bombs were, all of the dangers were, all of the traps where all of the troubles were. Now, let me ask you, how often would you consult it? Uh, would you consult it once a week? W would you consult it once a month? W would you consult it once a year? Come here, friends. God has given us, preach it, Barclay. God has given us a map. God has given us a book. And he has informed us as to the, watch this, my friend, the strategy of Satan. He has told us, he has this book, has informed us how he operates. Uh, it has shared with us uh, the nature of his uh, character. Uh, it has uh, 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 informed us how he operates, what he plans to do to your life and to your family's life and unfortunately having given us all this information we don't consult the map and we don't consult the book on a regular kind of basis and friends i'm here to tell you tonight that your spiritual survival and welfare of your family depends on your familiarity with this road map. This is why so many of our marriages are falling apart. We, uh, the, the Bible has told us where the dangers are. The Bible has told us where the traps are. The Bible has told us uh, how uh, the enemy operates, his tricks, his trap, his tribulation, but we don't consult the book. We don't consult the map. And then we wonder why is it that uh, we're on the wrong road? We're in the wrong field. I mean, we see people's lives exploding. We see it all around us. Every newscast is just an update on the notion and the fact and the reality that this snake just wasn't in that garden. At the beginning of time in creation, he's in your garden. He's in your paradise. And he is creating havoc. I mean, we got Six-year-old kids taking guns to school. Uh, we have uh, people going to a grocery store uh, to get groceries and, and, and never coming out of the grocery store. We got little kids at desks in school rooms uh, uh, who have been slaughtered like animals. We even have drug dealers passing drugs in courtrooms the defender sitting at the table with the lawyer and the judge present. We got folk walking through malls, shooting up malls. We got people 
breaking in your homes and breaking in churches. And yet, with all of this devastation going on, we are told how he operates. And he's winning the war. And he's winning the day. And so for the last few weeks, we've been, we've been trying to uh, help you to understand uh, how this creature uh, operates. And so uh, as you see uh, the graphic on the screen now, welcome to spiritual warfare. And what you need to know is this, the warfare is deadly and the warfare is dangerous. You got to know your enemy. You got to know uh, how he operates. You got to know what his character is. You you, you see the, uh, the scripture that I have uh, on the board uh, uh, on your screen in front of you. Uh, it's John 8 and verse number four. Uh, 44, watch something about the nature and the character of the snake in our enemy. The Bible says you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. In other words, his desires have become your desires. Oh, let, let me try that again. Because the text says, you're of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. In other words, what, what he desires, he has now got you to believe and to buy in, watch this, his own lustful desires. <laughs> One of the reasons uh, Lucifer is no longer in heaven is because he desired to be like God. And heaven ain't big enough for two. That's why he's down here. He, according to Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, he, he wanted worship. And when he couldn't get it, he caused a war, a rebellion in heaven. But now watch this, friends. He has gotten us to buy in to his lustful desire. Now, come, come here, come, come here, come here, come here. Uh, uh, and for those of you who are uh, within earshot of my age range, uh, 45 and older, you, you grew up like I did watching a comedian by the name of Flip Wilson. We laugh at him every week. He was a tremendous uh, uh, comedian uh, and a decent actor. He, he popularized a phrase that became a part of people's theological orientation. They drank too deeply from his statement. He got people believing that they were actually not responsible for their own actions. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some, some of you have already written it in the chat. Uh, he popularized a statement that said, the devil made me do it. Come here. Come here. Devil can't make you do anything. He can't make you do anything. People people bought into that and people still buy into that. Uh, and, and the notion and the implication is I'm not responsible for it. And since I'm not responsible for it, I'm not accountable for it because watch this. I was made to do it by the devil himself. Well, the devil really loved Flip, and he sure loved his bad theology. But friends, what the devil does is to get you to think his thoughts. Oh, Barclay, what did you just say? What the devil does 
is try to get you to think his thoughts. And that's the way he influences you. He can't make you do it, but he can sure get you thinking his stuff. I think I've shown that to you time and time again in this conversation that 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 the snake has with uh, with Sister Girl Eve. Had God said, "Thou shalt not eat of every tree of the garden." I, did God really say that? Well, you know, God kind of says something like that. See, that's what he does. God gave a command and he turned God's command into a question. And then got her questioning the command of God. Boy, you teaching this Bible up in here tonight. I'm trying to tell you, friend, all this stuff is in the book. It's in the roadmap. And the reason we keep getting blown up by Satan's lies and traps is because we don't consult the book. But watch this. You, you are of your father. The passage is still on, on the screen. You, you are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, ye you will do. Watch this. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Watch this, because there is no truth in him. Watch this. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Mm. Watch this. Watch this. Just pay attention to the passage. For he is a lie. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Look, look, look. I, I got to walk slow right through here. Watch this. He does not just tell lies. He is a liar. Okay. Let me try that again. All right. Uh, let, let me uh, uh, just, just rewind this thing and then, and then the uh, electric slide back and then the, uh, slide up on you again. He doesn't just tell lies. He is a liar. Mm. His nature, oh my goodness, his character is a liar. See, 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 uh, come on. If, if we're going to be brutally honest, there have been occasions we have told lies. But the fact that you tell a lie does not necessarily mean that you are a liar. You, you ever heard somebody call somebody a born liar? Well, uh, that's hyperbole. <laughs> that uh, hyperbole is, is true that you tell to exaggerate the truth that you told. All right. Uh, in other words, this person uh, has been lying so long, we just assume he was born. Lying. Nobody's born a liar. All right. Uh, that's that's an acquired sin. All right. I, I want you to watch this. The text says about Satan. He doesn't just tell lies. He is a liar. But he's going to this is going to knock you down. Th this is going to shake you up. Not only is he a liar. Oh, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He's the father of it. You missed that. Not only is he a liar, he's the father of it. Okay, you missed it again. Let me try. Okay, okay. I got an electric slide. And then come forward on you. Watch this. He's the father of it. Okay. I'm a father of two wonderful young men, uh, Christopher uh, and Reginald. That means I have offsprings. That means, Lord willing, uh, and my prayer is that I precede them in death. Watch this. I leave, I leave them here on the earth. In other words, they are my next generation. And if, and if they have sons and daughters, 
Then I got some grandchildren. Watch this, friends. The danger with Satan is that the lie he tells today <laughs> is already in the next generation. Ooh. Did you hear what I just said? See, 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 this is the danger. <laughs> and this is why we're losing our children. <sighs> because we have not taught them the book. We've not taught them the map. We've not taught them the Bible. Since we have not taught them the map, our lives have blown up. And their lives going to blow up too. Are you all listening to me tonight? See, the lies that we tell are already in the next generation. Because Satan has children. He's the father. That means his lie already has an offspring. It's already in the next generation. And we wonder why, what, what's, what's, what's happening to our kids? What's, what's happening to our children and to our grandchildren? Watch this. Satan is not winning. He's already won. Have you not seen families where generation after generation after generation, the same sins occur in the family? Have you not seen a man who, um, who abuses uh, his wife and abuse uh, uh, his children? Check his history. Somewhere along the line, he probably was abused himself. H have you seen the same generation live in poverty generation after generation after generation? I I'm not advocating it's genetic. I'm saying it's in the environment. And people pick up what's in their environment. But watch this. Not only do they pick up negative consequences in the environment, they pick up positive consequences in the environment. Have you not seen families where generation after generation, there are educators? Generation after generation, there are principals? Generation after generation, there are counselors? Generation after generation, there are successful businessmen? Generation after generation, they're lawyers, generation after generation. They're doctors in the family. It's not genetic. It's influential. What I'm trying to say to you this night, my friend, is that the enemy, we can expose him. You see, because I've come from a generation of generation where uh, my brothers uh, uh, left their first wives uh, for another woman. And, and I had sisters who, who left their husband uh, for another man. That's the generation, that, that's the family line I'm from. The alcoholics, drug users. That's my family environment. But watch this. In about six weeks, I would have been married to the same lady for 50 years. We got two children. One is married. He's been married to her for 15 years. See, see, see the curse and the cycle and the stronghold and the generational curses can be broken 
if we simply go back and find out where the landmines are, where the bombs are, where the traps are, where the trick wire you is. And that's the purpose of God's word. Now I want you to watch this for Um, and, and you need to hear me right through here. Uh, because uh, I'm calling this, and I'm trying to get across to you, uh, satanic strategy. Uh, you need to know that as part of satanic strategy is the principle of disguise. Ooh -wee. <sighs> say, say, say it again, B. The part of satanic strategy is disguise. I don't think I can get to it tonight, but, but I'm going to show you next week. I hope I can. That a part of his strategy is to get you to believe, watch this, he does not exist. All right, I, I will, uh, I'll expand that uh, in a few slides. But, but but watch the slide uh, on the screen. A part of satanic strategy <laughs> is either for you to miss him or misidentify him with something good. Okay, okay. R remember, I, I, I said a minute ago that, that a part of his strategy is to get you thinking Hey, uh, I don't exist. Uh, I, oh, okay, okay. L let me get on down the road so I can show you what I really want to show you. Watch this. As a part of satanic strategy, the snake, Satan, wants you to miss him <laughs> or misidentify him. D don't miss this caveat. Watch this, with something good. Okay, let me try it again. A part of satanic strategy is for you to miss him or misidentify him with something that's actually good. <laughs> Watch this. We're in football season. We're about to have a playoffs of both leagues, the National Football League, the American Football League. Uh, uh, and the two divisions uh, on, on both sides of, 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 of the NFL. Uh, uh, to, to, to my heartbreak, uh, the uh, San Francisco 49ers are going to be playing the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, it should have been the Cowboys uh, playing the uh, 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 Eagles uh, this Sunday, but uh, 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 hope springs eternal. Uh, hopefully next year, but 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 this year, uh, this coming Sunday, uh, uh, the San Francisco 49ers uh, are playing the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, uh, and whoever wins the game is going to be going to uh, the Super Bowl in February. All right, uh, they'll either play uh, Cincinnati or uh, Kansas City. All right, now. But those are the four teams left. Now, I want you to watch this. I promise you that each one of those teams have already done their homework. They've been watching. In fact, all four of those teams have men and women on the payroll that all they do on a weekly basis is scout the opponent that that team is going to play. In fact, uh, they started from, from preseason. Uh, they watch game film on each opponent because they didn't know who they were going to play until the schedule came out. Or uh, until uh, uh, the victory is won in the playoff, like what happened last weekend. Now, I want you to watch this, friend. Uh, you need to know that Satan, the snake, 
has a scouting report on you. Okay, let me be a little more raw. Satan has a contract out on you. I want that one to sink in. He has a demon assigned to you. Watches everything you do. He's just waiting for you <laughs> to leave the shade up. He's just waiting for you to misstep. He's planted a bomb in your boundary. He's planted a trap in your travel. He's placed explosives in your bedroom. And he's just waiting for the right time and the right moment to explode them, to release the trap, to set up the lustful situation. To set up your tendency uh, to cuss, to cut, and everything else. He's just waiting on that one opportunity to run his play or his counterplay on you. Well, how does he know about me? He got game film on you. He's got a contract out on you. Focus. I can take you all through the Bible and show you times where Satan has, has brilliantly set people up for destruction. Second Samuel chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. When kings go forth to war, here is David, mighty military man, conquering nations left and right. And in the spring of the year, when, when kings go forth to war on this day, David decided to take the day off. And when he did, slept too late, ignored the alarm clock, went to the balcony of his uh, palatial palace and looked down on this day, saw Bathsheba. Taking a bath. Why this day? <laughs> Satan said, because you took the day off. I've been waiting on you. And friends, if you don't know the rest of that destructive story, go to 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 2 Samuel chapter 12. David is going to end up killing her husband when he finds out that his one night affair has led to a pregnancy. And when he couldn't cover it up, he killed the woman's husband. And he strategically waited on him for that one moment. Why? Because he has game film on you. Because he has a scouting report on you. And friends, if he's scouting the king, you better preach that thing up in here tonight, boy. If he's scouting the kings, and if he's scouting presidents, and if he's scouting senators and congress people and elders and deacons and preachers and pew members, you better know he has your unlisted phone number. You better know he has your email address. You better know that that rascal has game film on you. And next week, I'm going to show you how to run the counterplay when Satan believes and thinks that he has you set up for downfall and for destruction and until then may the lord of the harvest bless you
and may he bless you real good. Come on back now. Oh,